Hi there and welcome to this session on looking at temperature changes and the rate constant. In the previous lesson we learnt about how the rate constant connects the concentration of reactants to the rate of reaction and how it's different for different reactions. We also had a look at the units and how to calculate them as well as the value for the rate constant and we learnt that it varies depending on the order of reaction. So in this lesson we're going to have a look at the Arrhenius equation. First of all, let's have a look at how temperature affects the rate of reaction. So here I've got a Boltzmann distribution, I've got my energy on the lower axis and my fraction of particles on my y-axis. So we can see I've got my activation energy there, Ea, we're going to refer to that quite a lot today, and I've got three different lines, and the lower line here is 300k, a very high temperature, and then I'm getting a lower and lower temperature. And we can see that at the lowest temperature, 100 Kelvin, I've only got this very small fraction or very small portion under the line of that green curve there of particles that have at least the activation energy in order to react. When I get to the this curve here, my 200, I get a larger proportion. So now I have all of these particles underneath that have at least the activation energy or above in order to be able to react. When I get to my final curve, this one here, the 300k curve, we can see that I've got the most, out of all the three options, I have the most, the highest number of particles that have got at least the activation energy or above, which will enable them to react. So this shows us that at the higher temperature on this curve, we're going to have a greater rate of reaction. Let's introduce the Arrhenius equation. So this is it. We've got k, our rate constant, is equal to a, e to the minus of an exponential function, the activation energy over RT. And let me just explain what each of those components are. So of course, we've come across K before. This is our rate constant. So we learned about that in the previous session. We've got A, which is also a constant, the Arrhenius constant. A bit difficult to fit that all in. And then it's the same units as K for our radius constant. Then we've got our activation energy, Ea, up here. And you may well have seen it referred to as Ea before. We've got our activation energy. That needs to be in joules when we're doing this calculation. That's really important. And then we've got a value for R, which is another constant. It is a gas constant. So that's going to be a number. And it is 8.31 kilojoules per mole. And finally, we've got T. Unsurprisingly, as usual, it is temperature. And I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that temperature has to be in Kelvin, of course. We need to do a conversion there. So E, it means it's an exponential function. It's a button that you can find on your calculator. So I really recommend you get used to these calculations on your calculator that you're going to have in the exam with you as well. You don't need to memorise the value of E it's an exponential relationship, that's all it means, and the value is always going to be in your calculator. You need to memorise the Arrhenius equation by heart. It's really important for you to be able to access any of these calculations. And activation energy is in joules per mole. You'll often have values that come up in kilojoules. You need to convert those into joules before you work out any calculation using the Arrhenius equation. Here's a question to have a go at. So pause the video, give it a go. With this question, the first thing we're going to do is to write out my Arrhenius equation. So A to E to the minus activation energy over RT. It's a bit squished, but we can get it in there. So it's asking us to calculate the rate constant K. So no rearranging needed. I just need to plug my values in. So let's have a look. A is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6. And then we're going to get in our calculator and put E to the minus... 75, but I've got it in kilojoules per mole, so I need to convert that into joules. So I'm going to times that by a thousand. So 75,000 joules per mole divided by my gas constant, which is 8.31, times by my temperature that has been converted into Kelvin, of course. They'll be looking for that correct conversion. So 50 degrees Celsius plus 273 which is 323. So I plug this into my calculator, being really careful that for my specific calculator, all of my brackets are in the right place. And we'll come out with a value of K, which is 1.89 times 10 to the minus six. And my units are going to be S to the minus one. 
we can rearrange the Arrhenius equation to give us any of the unknown values. For example, the rate constant or the activation energy. But for this, we need to be confident with natural logs. So bring those exponential functions down. Let's bring our original equation in then. E to the minus EA over RT. So if I log both sides, I can get rid of this exponential function. So the natural log of K is equal to the natural log of A minus EA over RT. So I can also say that EA over RT is equal to ln A minus ln K. Rearrange further just to make EA my subject in this particular case would be ln A minus ln K times RT. Let's put that into practice. Pause the video and have a go. I'm going to skip forward here and immediately write out my natural log version of the equation. So remember, ln k is equal to ln a, or the natural log, I would say ln, minus ea over rt. So we've been asked to calculate the activation energy of this reaction. So you recall when I rearranged it, ea was equal to ln a minus ln k times rt. So my activation energy is, well, let's plug the values in. So we've already been given our natural log of A, which is 16.9. We've been given K, but we haven't been given the natural log of K, so we need to work that out. So we just plug it into our calculator. And that value is minus 5.74. So minus and minus is a plus. So I can just put it as plus. Times my gas constant, which is Kindly, we've been reminded, 8.31 times temperature. Now, don't forget, that needs to be converted. So 273 plus 25, 298. So I'm going to plug all of that in, into my calculator and I'll get my answer of 56,076. Joules per mole. Now that's quite a large number, so I'm going to convert that and just give my answer as 56 kilojoules per mole. Here we're going to apply it to a graph. So we've got the natural log of K plotted against 1 over T. This is going to give us a straight line as such, and that gradient is going to be equal to, so if we calculate the gradient, as always, rise over run, that gradient is going to be equal to minus EA over my gas constant. And that gradient, this here, can be used to calculate the Arrhenius constant. Here's another practice question. Pause the video and give it a go. First thing we're going to do is to plot the values and draw a line of best fit. Make that line as big as possible. The more values you have in, the more accurate your gradient calculation is going to be. So here's an example of those values plotted. Using the graph, I can see that the intercept, or the y-intercept, is the same as the natural log of A. So I need to convert the natural log of A, the value, which is minus 1.65 from the graph, to A. So I'm going to raise both sides by E. So that means A is equal to E to the power minus 1.65, which is equal to 0 0.192. So that's my Arrhenius constant. So that's the first part of the question done. The second part, we need to remember that the gradient of the line is EA, the activation energy, over R. So let's work out the gradient. We know the gradient is the change in y, the rise, over the change in x, the run. So along the stairs up the corridor, but it's rise over run always. It's a really good phrase to remember. We're going to use two points on the graph to calculate that. So well, let's use 0 and minus 1.65. So that's our, my y-intercept, of course. And then we'll use a point further along the graph, 0.0035 to minus four. So let's calculate the gradient between those two points. So therefore the gradient of the line is the difference between the first two values. So my values of y on the top, so the difference between those, divided by the difference between the two x values here. And that gives me a gradient of 6.714 times 10 to the minus three. Now that is activation energy over r, and I've been given my value of r. So there it is up there. Therefore, the activation energy, if I rearrange my equation, must be equal to the value I've just calculated times R. 
8.31 and that gives me 55,795 joules per mole and I'm going to convert that because it's easier to read into 55.8 kilojoules per mole. Remember, the triangle used to calculate the gradient needs to be as big as possible. That's going to reduce your margin of error and hugely increase your accuracy.